know if I've seen enough, but I think I've heard about enough of that. That's that was Tommy Dreamer. Hey, they want to see some wild stuff. Let me let me go with Stacy and pull out some of the legends material on the king here, and you'll see him beating up people like that. Exactly. Well, all I all I gotta say is it looks like it's gonna happen. Uh, Tommy Dreamer from the ECW is going to be right here in the USWA and all I'm going to tell you right now is they say that they like pain, they say that they like to be abused, they say that they like to get beat on. Well, let me tell you something, Tommy Dreamer. If you like pain, if you like to be abused, if you like to be beat on, when you step in the USWA and you step in the ring with me, it's going to be the happiest day of your life. Because if you like it, you're going to get plenty of it. So come on down and see us, because the king is here waiting for you, okay? Ah, uh, I tell you, this, is, uh, this has been a lot of conversation about this all over the country. And the king is dead serious. He issued the challenge out. Come and get me if you want me. We want some more of it. We'll be back, Michael, and just for you morons here in Philadelphia. The king is not coming. Do you understand that? I said the king is not going to be in the house. Read my lips. I'm not going to be there, Paulie. I don't care how you imply, how you hint, what kind of rumors you start. I'm not coming to the ECW arena Saturday night. But you know what? <laughs> I do have a special surprise in store for all you Philadelphia idiots. You remember a moron by the name of Chris Candido? Huh? A couple of weeks ago, on Monday Night Raw, he tried to embarrass a very close personal friend of mine named Brian Christopher from the USWA, which, by the way, is a legitimate wrestling organization. So you know what? I said right when that match was taking place, the day is going to come that I am going to have the opportunity to embarrass that little punk Chris Candido. And now you know what? The day has come. The day has come, Candido. Now you think, you think that you're some kind of big shot because you weren't good enough to make it in the World Wrestling Federation. So you're, well, you're lowering yourself. You're coming down the mountain and you see all of these creeps like Paul E., Tommy Dreamer, and the Sandman waiting with open arms. They're going to embrace you, and they're going to welcome you into ECW. And you think you're a big shot. Well, let me tell you something. You're not. And I'm going to prove it to you. And Vince McMahon is going to prove it to you, too. Because I talked to Vince, and he came up with a heck of an idea with my help. What we're going to do we're going to send you a little visitor. We're going to send somebody that you're real familiar with. <laughs> and you're not going to like it. You know what, at first I told Vince, I said, why don't I just go and I take Candido's girl? Because believe me, everybody else has. But that's what Vince says. <laughs> everybody else has. Why do you want to do it, King? I said, you're right, Vince. So we're going to send you a surprise. We're going to send you your ex-partner. Tom Pritchard. And Tom Pritchard is going to come to ECW, and he's going to do something to you, Chris Candido, that you're not going to enjoy. Right there in front of all of those peons at the bingo hall. And he's going to bring a videotape back to me and Vince McMahon, and he's going to show us exactly what he's going to do to you in front of all of your new followers, in front of Paul E., in front of the Sandman, in front of Tommy Dreamer. Tom Pritchard is going to do a number on you, Chris. <laughs> and Vince McMahon and I are going to have the pleasure of having it on videotape. And when he beats your brains out, I'm going to insist that we show it on Monday Night Raw where the world can see it. You understand that? And he don't, meet, he don't need me there to help him. All he needs video camera for proof. So get ready, Candido, because your old partner, Tom Pritchard, is coming from the World Wrestling Federation to take care of you once and for all. <laughs> that one time, Michael, if you live long enough, you're going to see everything, and I think today kind of proves it. Hello right. again, everybody. Lance Russell and Michael St. John, and we are right here, ready to go with another big day of USWA Championship Wrestling but kind of an unusual day, too. We've got a super thing.
The lovely Stacy is going to be out here with us a little bit later on. I don't blame you one bit. We've got some great matches lined up, but what is all of this? We are sitting here with security in the studio for the first time since I've ever done the show. I've been involved in radio and television for a long time, Lance, and I've never been surrounded by security for a program as we are here today. And some unusual circumstances, to say the least, led to this. What, what, what was the whole background behind this thing? Last Saturday, Jerry the King Lawler made an appearance in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, an unscheduled appearance, I may add. And uninvited, I might add. At the ECW Arena. Now, first of all, for our fans, ECW stands for Extreme Championship Wrestling. It's an organization out of Philadelphia that is, to say the least, cutting edge. Well, last Saturday night, the King Jerry Lawler showed up at the ECW arena after the lights had it gone dark in the arena, and then as the lights came back up, the King was in the ring. There he is. And to use ECW terminology, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and as a result, uh, Tommy Dreamer, who is one of the quote-unquote stars of the ECW, has vowed revenge. He said what's good enough for the goose is good enough for the gander and has threatened to be here on television with us here today. Wow. And he's crazy. He's absolutely crazy. I think we have some uh, videotape of uh, the King's appearance up in Philadelphia. Let's take a look at it and see what happened when Jerry showed up. Boy, I can tell you what. <laughs> call it chaos, call it pandemonium, call it trouble. Man, trouble. And, and, and Tommy Dreamer, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, who Tommy Dreamer is, he was the one with the stick that was pounding guys on the back and beating all around there. And so, hence, we have a little protection in here because this guy has vowed he's going to get back at Lawler and USWA and all that kind of thing. I want to say that we have one here. Uh, Commissioner Elliot Pollock, who is here early, appreciate you being here. And here's a, uh, a young man who, we, who was there. Let me tell you, he was right there in Philadelphia when it all took place. And Bill Behrens, who is uh, one of the major television syndicators with Showbiz Inc. Bill, thanks for coming in here and all. Let me ask you a question. It looked like just all of it went to pieces well, up there when Jerry showed up. Oh, you're right, Lance. Uh, I was backstage, uh, big surprise. The King showed up, Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam, Sabu. Yeah. They all crashed the ring. Next thing you know, ECW wrestlers were laid lying. It was a total decimation. We're not going to take that chance here today. We're not going to take the chance that Tommy Dreamer is going to come here. He is not going to be allowed in the building. We have put extra security around. We are out here. We're going to make sure this does not happen in this TV studio today. And you kind of reported to uh, Commissioner Pollock what happened up there. Uh, Commissioner Pollock quickly got on the phone, and that's why we have this arrangement here today. Okay, well, we appreciate you guys being here. And you're sitting there booing about keeping Tommy Dreamer out. Easy for you to say. You don't have to be out here in the middle of it. Tell you what we do. We still have action to go. And we're going to, I think he sent some friends down here before, Michael. We're going to take time out and we're going to be back with plenty of stuff yet to go. SWA ready to go with some super action to kick things off. Scheduled for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing already in the ring, wrestling out of parts unknown, weighing 240 pounds, Mr. Wrestling. His opponent, the reigning unified world heavyweight champion, wrestling out of Memphis, Tennessee, weighing 242 pounds, here is Jerry, the King Lawler. One fall, 10 minute time limit. You got all of these suits standing over here to try to keep Tommy Dreamer or all the rest of those ECW clowns from coming in the arena. Well, let me just issue a personal invitation to him or any of you idiots. Anybody that wants to affiliate with the ECW, if you want to find me, here I am. Personal invitation, okay? I went to ECW. The old, you heard the old saying, I came, I saw, I conquered. I told you what it was before I went there. It was a bunch of crap. I went there, I proved it. I left Tommy Dreamer and all of the rest of that crap laying in a pool of their own blood in their own arena. Well, we showed the tape, Jerry, and he's still hot about that EC, whole ECW thing. He is uh, going today facing uh, Mr. Wrestling, and it's Belton. 
Jerry's getting a strong test right here on television to start off the program today. And Mr. Wrestling carrying on the legend of the famed Mr. Wrestling from Championship Wrestling uh, lore, including the great uh, Ken Williamson, who was, of course, the original Mr. Wrestling, and Mr. Wrestling 2, uh, John Walker, who wrestled for a long time throughout uh, the southern part of the country, and then uh, I think has since retired to Hawaii. That's uh, exactly right. Boy, it's great to have a guy with a super memory. Michael, I love you, because I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, <laughs> and he remembers everything. And look at the king. You know what I was thinking, listening to Jerry on the mic up there? I I, I tell you, Michael, you and I were talking about it a little earlier. You can feel the tension that's here in the studio today. And I think part of this, what Jerry had to say, not that he didn't mean it, but I think that some of it is because he was... Look out, look out, Lance. Oh, there he is, right there. Jerry Lawler said, come on up here and get somebody. But the security people are pulling him back out. Coming this way, Lance, watch out. Dreamer hollering at Waller. Mr. Wrestling called out by the referee to help get this big guy out of here. And Waller's saying, hey, tell him to let him go. Let him come up in here. Michael, I believe. in the first place, Michael. We don't know how many... Here he comes again. Boy, I mean... It's taken six, seven men to hold this gentleman back. I mean, Dreamer is... He is incensed, and of course, Lawler... Lawler's ready to take him on, but I don't I don't know if this arena... I don't know if this television station could stand what happened last week. Well, frankly, from what we heard before, we don't know how many other guys he brought with him, so maybe it's not a good idea to, to have, I know you don't care, Jerry, but uh, uh, well enough to be said that everything, uh, cameras are still intact, studio is almost intact in here. And so, the matches with Mr. Wrestling is going to be stopped. And that is going to be the end of it. I'm checking to see if uh, referee Bill Rush is around. I don't see him. I think he's back trying to get Dreamer, and so the King has picked it up. And boy, I got to tell you one thing. They are a determined group. No more so determined than our own King. But let me tell you, this uh, Tommy Dreamer has got a reputation of being just wild as a March hare, as they say. Remember, it's called Extreme Championship Wrestling yeah. up there. And, and they're proud go, of that. Oh, absolutely. And they'll go to the extreme, the language they use, the, the object. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So you don't know what's going to happen, Lance, and that's, that's unnerving. Let's take a look uh, at some of the reason why they're worried about Tommy Dreamer. Take a look at this quick little 60 seconds worth of... Man, I mean, let it all hang out. <laughs> That's Michael. extreme. That is extreme. We got more of it, too. Maybe not that extreme. We'll just have to see before this day is over. We'll be back in one moment. Wow. Wait, she is right I'm, there. I'm, I'm on my way right now. Okay, great, Stacy. Try to get a word from Jerry Lawler. Can you get that door for me? Okay, here we are. It's Stacy. It's Stacy. Um, um, can I see Jerry Lawler for a minute? Okay. Hey, I want to get a word about. Come on, Lawler. Okay, um, well, come on. If he's out here, let him come out here. Yeah, I'm right here. Well, come on. Someone, some security back here? I swear to you, at 2 o'clock, how many of you people are going to make you see Jerry Lawler drown Come on, Tommy. in his own pool Tommy. of blood? I'm telling you, Tommy. Get him out of here. Take him out. Sorry about that. Well, I guess I'm not going to get a word from Jerry Lawler. Back to you, Lance. Oh, okay, Stacy. You're right in the middle of what's happening back there. Looks like the little altercation has spilled on over back into the dressing room. But, yeah. uh, boy, you talk about today, it's going to come to a head. 
It's all going to come to a head at the big one at 2 o'clock today because Jerry the King Lawler and Tommy Dreamer will meet head-to-head -head in the main event for the Unified right World Right inside Tower. of one ring, and how is it going to stand? Right now, thank you for a rundown of the out-of-town. Jerry the King Lawler, here's a man that, who went into the enemy territory, so to speak, as we've got the, uh, some holler from the ECW crew over here. Uh, you think it's funny? Well, I just, I'm, why would you, let me ask you this, are you talking about these guys came in here because they wanted to give you a hard way to go on it. Why did you go up to Philadelphia and invade the ECW arena? Because I wanted to prove a point, Lance, and I think I did prove a point. I told everybody. I've been telling everybody like Vince McMahon. I've been telling you. I've been telling Elliot Pollock from day one that this ECW is a bunch of garbage. You know, they want to talk about how great they are, how extreme they are, how tough they are. Well, I finally took it upon myself because it looked like McMahon was going to allow him to come into the, to the World Wrestling Federation. It looked like that Elliot Pollock was going to allow him to come into the USWA. I just wanted to prove a point, and I did prove a point. I went up to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which, believe me, it's not the armpit of the world. I want to tell you what Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is. If you ever wanted to give the world an enema, that's where you'd stick the nozzle, right in Philadelphia. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, I went to Philadelphia, and I went and I found this little bingo hall that they had their wrestling matches in. And, yeah, there were about... There were about 1,500 moronic idiots, just like these half brain hair lip idiots over here, that sit there and they scream and they had frying pans and they were throwing chairs in the ring and they were hitting the wrestlers and the wrestlers were hitting them and it was stupid. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I showed up and I jumped in the ring and I proved my point. Like I said, I came, I saw, and I conquered. I'd heard all this talk from Tommy Dreamer. I'd heard all this talk from Paul E. When I left the ECW arena, they were all bleeding. They were all laying flat on their backs, courtesy of King Jerry Lawler. Now, if Tommy Dreamer wants to come down here and get that point further proven to him, he don't have to wait except until 2 o'clock this afternoon because now, Tommy Dreamer, you're in my backyard. You're in Memphis, Tennessee. You're going to be over at the big one, and that's Jerry Lawler territory, pal. And I promise you this. This is a promise. You think you can get extreme up in the ECW. Well, I'm going to show you where extreme wrestling was born, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And when I get through with you, you're going to really know the meaning of the word extreme this afternoon. Well, I got to tell you one thing I can agree with, because we've talked about this before. As uh, Jerry goes by and the guys that are dressed with uh, the ECW on, uh, as uh, Lawler confronting somebody in the crowd there, if you can get him settled down. Can you believe I'm asking Brian Christopher to settle him down? As Brian, who comes hobbling out after having... Don't worry about these punks. They're going to find out soon enough, just like Tommy Dreamer, that this is the USWA. This is the ECW. And I'll tell you what, wrestling is back today, 2 o'clock in the big one. Billy Joe Travis, you might have had me down for a little while, but you can't keep me down. I'm going to be there staring you at the face, 2 o'clock in the big one. And me. You think you broke my ankle? It ain't gonna be nothing that a little tape can't fix. And when I do, I swear to God, I'm gonna super kick all your stinking teeth right down your throat, punk. He's uh, was out to us. It's a big one to be there, because I'll be there waiting on you. You know, Michael, I don't know. Here's a guy, look at him. He can't even put his boot on. His ankle is so swollen up. And what, what has happened is earlier, Billy Travis was out here under the ring. He uh, he slipped out. Uh oh, uh oh, more trouble, more trouble. Look out! Oh, he could just stay on Elliot Pollock. Look out! Hey.
Commissioner laying out there in the middle of the floor. Puts out, oh no! Got that metal chair. We gotta get out of here. We're gonna wrap it up right now. Looking for you back next week. For Michael St. John, we gotta get over and check Michael. Lance Russell for Stacy saying bye-bye. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this state, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling. Tell you tomorrow, uh, there has not been a card like this in the Bluff City here in Memphis, Tennessee. I bet in the past six or seven years, it is the You're brawl right. to end it all. The ECW versus the USWA. It has been talked about worldwide, not only here in the Mid South, but it's uh, the talk about this one has been worldwide for weeks now. And it all happens tomorrow night here at the big one, starting at 7:30. 7:30. And that's the important, main yeah. event: Jerry the King Lawler and Brian Christopher from USWA will defend the honor of the USWA against ECW's Tommy Dreamer and I don't like that guy I don't know about you but I don't like that guy and the Sandman and that will be the big match that's uh, that it, that tells it all and that war will come to a head tomorrow night at 7:30 at the big uh, one. Oh boy, you know, and the thing that kicks me about this ECW thing, they talk like they they're the only ones that were ever heard of the word tough, you know. Jerry Lawler has been in more tough battles than these guys have even dreamed about. And when he gets together with Brian Christopher and they meet those two guys, Dreamer and Sandman, hello, what a battle that one is going to be. That's not all of it, Michael. How about the semifinal match, which is going to be that uh, Battle Royal? The Battle of Royal Memphis Rumble. Stampede yeah. Royal Rumble. Sixteen men will end up in the ring. What it does is it starts out with two men. They start out in the ring, and then every minute, every 60 seconds, a new wrestler enters the ring. And by the time it, by the time you get 16 men on there, you don't know who's fighting who. Hey, I would have said just what you said, except I can't remember that kind of stuff. The only thing I remember about it is, before it's all over with, you are going to have a ring full of folks battling in there, and it's go from the word go, 
And they keep adding guys, and I love that concept. And a, and a big purse. They're all fighting for that money, and for, of course, for the title of the king of the Battle of the Ring. And it's going to be that's going to be one whale of a match. Plus, the USWA tag team titles will be on the line as the result of an edict by the USWA. In that match, they are being billed as ECWs, JC Ice and Wolfie D, PG-13. I don't think they're part of ECW. I think they're part of themselves. But they'll be in the match against Flash Flanagan and Nick Dinsmore. One of those teams is going to walk out with the USWA tag belt. Got to tell you, the best thing that could happen to PG-13 is not to be claimed by ECW. Who wants to be complained by Extreme? Yeah. Hey, listen. Hardcore showdown. Now, here's one that we're interested in. We can sit back and watch these guys get it on when we're talking about Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam, and let me tell you, this guy is talented, and Sabu, another talented one, going against Chris Candido, and that wild Tasmanian one, Taz, will be in here. And it'll be crazy. These guys will stop at nothing. You know, they'll, they'll, they're wild men. That's the way to, to build that match. It's the hardcore showdown in that one. Plus the survival. Mentioned, of course, in that big battle with Jerry the King Lawler and Brian Christopher was Tommy Dreamer. All I have is a picture of Tommy Dreamer. These guys, though, stands up there blah, blah, pouring the beer down and all that stuff. Let's see what he's got to say about it. Hello, Lance Russell, and hello to all of the wrestling fans watching us in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Joey Styles, the voice of Extreme Championship Wrestling. I'm a big Lance Russell fan. I'm a bigger fan of professional wrestling, and that's why I'm thrilled about what's going down tomorrow night. Issues being settled in the ring where they should be settled, not in courtrooms, not with ratings wars, in the ring. Tomorrow night, Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam and Sabu, Jerry Lawler's favorite extreme tag team, will take on ECW's combination of the ECW World Television Champion, the Human Suplex Machine, Taz, and Mr. No Gimmicks Needed, Chris Candido, plus the King, himself and Brian Christopher will take on the extreme icon, the Sandman, and my guest at this time, the innovator of violence himself, Tommy Dreamer. Joey, how many years has Jerry Lawler been in WWF? Three, four, who cares? And never once did you say, I'm Jerry Lawler, and I represent the USWA. Joey, how many times has Brian Christopher wrestled on Monday Night Raw? I think three. And every time... He says he's from USWA. Brian Christopher, I have a little respect for you. At least you fight for what you believe in. And I don't blame you for never acknowledging that Jerry Lawler, the scumbag, is your dad. You see, Jerry Lawler, last time I saw you, you left me laying. You brought me to the hospital. When I came to Memphis, I left you laying. You sent the whole locker room out right before I was going to take you out. And I couldn't get the job done. But now, I'm going to get the job done. Tomorrow night, I'm bringing the Sandman. I'm bringing ECW to the hardcore city of Memphis. And it's going to be the way it was. Wrestling, fighting, a brawl. Everything you've always wanted in one night. Jerry Lawler, I'm taking you out. Oh, the gauntlet's been thrown down, Lance. Yes, sir. Tommy Dreamer, I said Sandman, and we've got something, some words about Sandman. And uh, Joey Style, good to see him. Joey's an excellent uh, announcer. The only thing is, I question is the people that he's hanging out with up there sometimes. I don't know whether Joey is with this one or not, but I know Tommy uh, Dreamer, uh, Sandman, rather, is right there. So let's take a listen, Michael, and see what that has to say. Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman. Going to Memphis to visit USWA. Jerry Lawler and your brat. You guys want to have a little party? ECW knows how to party. I'll show you how. You want to get extreme? I'll show you how. Tomorrow night. Whoa. Hey. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. Don't worry about doing it too much to the Sandman right there, your own self. 
Jerry Lawler and Brian Christopher has some ideas about Absolutely. taking care of a little of that, huh? And here they come now. I think we're going to hear what this is going to be all about tomorrow night at the big one. Well, we've been talking about them. Dreamer and Sandman were talking about them. Why don't we let them speak for themselves? They're perfectly capable of doing that with their mouth and with their fist in the ring. We're talking about Brian Christopher, Jerry the King Lawler. Tomorrow night is going to be the showdown. It'll be Brian and Jerry against Dreamer and the Sandman, and that is one we just flat don't want to miss. You, uh oh, what do you think? Here it comes in here. Well, you've heard it all. It's been said. Brian. Lance, what a night it's going to be. What a night it's going to be tomorrow night at the big one. Nobody, nobody wants to miss it because this is a night that people are going to be talking about for months and mo possibly years because this is the first time that the ECW has invaded Memphis, Tennessee. And I'm just glad. I'm just tickled to death to be a part of it, Lance. But first... And I just hope that those ECW fans come on down there to the big one so we can show you just how we can get extreme and hardcore right here in the USWA. But first, Lance, I'm going to be wrestling not only in that match, but first, what I've been waiting on for a long time is this match with Billy Joe Travis. It's a match two out of three falls, right? right. With the USWA heavyweight title on the line, the winner, the loser of the match has to be strapped to the turnbuckle, and the winner of the match gets to get a nice belt and give the loser 10 lashes across the back. <laughs> now, Billy Joe Travis, I brought this belt out here just to show you what I was gonna have in my hand. Yeah. But this isn't the one I'm gonna use, Travis. I want somebody out there to come down to the big one, and I want you to bring me the biggest, the thickest, leather strap you can find because that's what i'm going to use on you travis after i beat you like a dog it's going to be worse than anything you ever seen on roots lance i'm, I'm going to beat him and beat him until the blood is running down your back then that's when it's time to get extreme that's when it's time to get hardcore that's when i'm going to step in the ring with this man right here's my partner and sandman tommy dreamer it all starts at 7.30, but it ain't going to end until we're through beating you over the head with everything we can get our hands on. Oh, boy. You think that one isn't going to be something? Wait till you get around to seeing Brian and Jerry together against Sandman and Dreamer. Sandman and Dreamer. Let's talk about them, Lance. Let's talk about the ECW for just a minute. Here. Please do. First of all, I heard you compliment Joey Styles. You said Joey Styles is a great announcer. Let me tell you no, something, I Lance. Didn't say yeah, great. yeah, you excellent did. Enough. Oh, excellent Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. There is nothing excellent at ECW. I can assure you. I've been there. You've I've been seen there. it. There's nothing excellent about it. I'll take it and away. that includes Joey Styles. He couldn't say grits with a mouthful, and you think he's an announcer? Well, he's not. But I want to tell you something, Joey Styles. I want to give you a personal invitation. I want you to come on down to Memphis. Come on with the rest of the extremely crappy wrestlers from up there and see what it's like down here. Now, Sandman, we all know what you're all about. You are, and I'm just going to lay it right on the line right now. I'm going to tell everybody exactly what Sandman is all about. Sandman is quite simply a drunk drug addict. Do you know what I'm talking about, Lance? Yeah! Yeah! The reason Sandman is in ECW is because WCW, WWF, or USWA wouldn't book him on a dare because he's a drunk drug addict. He has to get drunk to get up enough courage to go in the ring. Have you seen him, Lance? Those does he take a six-pack to the ring with him? Yes, he does. Does he drink beer during the match? He's obviously a drunk drug addict. And Sandman, you better bring some more friends because Tommy Dreamer ain't going to get the job done from you. You better bring Jack Daniels, and you better bring Jim Beam, and you better drink them down big time, brother. You better be so drunk when you stagger into that ring because if you're not, you're going to feel some extreme pain like you've never felt in your life. Now, Tommy Dreamer, let's talk for a minute about Tommy Dreamer. 
Tommy Dreamer, you like to come out here and stand all nice and calm and act like you know what you're talking about. And you did say one thing that was true on your little interview. You said, Jerry Lawler, the last time I saw you, you left me laying. And that's right, Tommy Dreamer. I came to ECW, and I took that stick away from the Sandman, and I hit Tommy Dreamer. You saw it last week. I hit him right between the legs with Sandman stick. And you know what I heard, Lance? I heard they had to haul Tommy Dreamer to the hospital. And I heard that they had to do, this is what I heard now. This is the word that ECW put out. I heard that they had to do a little surgery on Tommy Dreamer's testicles. <laughs> hey, but you know what? You know what, Lance? I'm going to tell you something right now. I know that's a lie. I know that's not true, because Tommy Dreamer, I'm here to tell you, you don't have any testicles, pal. Uh, come on now. Boy, I hope this is settled tomorrow night. I'm gonna tell you something tomorrow night, Tommy Dreamer. When I get through with you, you're gonna have to go to the hospital, but what you're gonna have to go see is a gynecologist, and I promise you that. It's gonna be extreme tomorrow night at the big one, and I mean what I'm talking about. Boy, I don't have any doubt about that. You can see how out of hand this thing has gotten, Michael. Well, we'll take time out. We got more great action still to go. Did you ever hear going to have the hardcore showdown with Rob Van Dan and Sabu uh, going against Chris Candido and Taz. Uh, we've got some comments coming out of Taz. Let's hear what he had to say about it. Tomorrow night, Memphis, a new era begins. We're coming to town. You see, I heard they just did one of them night shows in Memphis. That's great. And you know, you, here in Memphis, here you got this, uh, this USWU, USWE, uh... USWA. Yeah. Yeah, if I want you to talk, I'll beat it out of you. You shut your hole until I tell you to talk. Memphis, promotion, USWA. Right. Great. But you see, we're ECW, we're just a little bit different. You know, when you hear ECW, you think about, you know, chairs and baseball bats and barbed wire and tables and garbage cans. That's great. All those weapons are great. And I'm sure Dreamer and Sandman, along with Sabu and Van Damme, they'll give you those weapons. But you see, me, I'm a little different. See, I'm Taz. I'm the human suplex machine. And I don't need a weapon. Because my hands are my weapons. I will, and I guarantee you, I will wrap my hands around someone's neck and choke them out with the Taz mission, the Kata Hajime. That is a violent act. I will commit a violent act by robbing someone of their oxygen. A violent act committed by a violent man. Me, Taz, the world television champion. Things are going to be a little different in Memphis tomorrow night. It's going to go back to the way it used to be in Memphis. Pure wrestling from me, Taz. Pure violence from me, Taz. Pure ability from me, Taz. Pure excitement, pure mayhem. Pure rage from the path of rage. So I'll tell you what, you show up at the Big One Expo Center and experience something besides ECW, me, the human suplex machine, the world television champion. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. Tomorrow it in too. I think all the folks will. They remember Paul E. Dangerously. Yeah, you remember him. Let's take a listen. We've got some words from ECW guru. And day out, the phone calls come in to the offices of Extreme Championship Wrestling. From all the fans in the great wrestling town of Memphis, Tennessee. Please save this decrepit city state of professional wrestling. Jerry Lawler has sold his soul to the WWF and sold Memphis Wrestling.
going right down the drain along with him. But I told you people that ten years ago. I told you what a scumbag Jerry Lawler was. He was then, and he's even a bigger scumbag now. We understand at ECW. See, four years ago, the group of people that stand with me today took the city of Philadelphia by storm. Took a town that was burned to the ground by the two big wrestling promotions, and they forgot where they came from. At ECW, we never forget where we come from. At Memphis, Tennessee, we know what you want. Extreme, hardcore, professional wrestling at its very best. And on a personal note, we're coming here to show up the king. We're coming here to show up the entire USWA. PG-13 can tell you all about that. We are here to show up the king because Jerry Lawler, on a personal note, I swear to God, I hate your filthy, stinking <laughs> guts. And it's going to be my pleasure for the wrestlers of Extreme Championship Wrestling to show you up in your hometown tomorrow night at the Big One Expo Center, a whole new era in Memphis wrestling begins. Because if you get to check out ECW, it goes like this. If you're not a fan of professional wrestling, you will become one. And if you are, we're going to blow your socks off tomorrow night at the Big One Expo Center when we take you to the extreme. Bad dude, Taz. You know him from the ECW. Some of you know him. We had some words sent down here to us, and let's take a listen to what Taz had to say. I'm Taz, and I'm the ECW World Television Champion. And that makes me the best wrestler on television today, in and out of TV. And if there's anybody in the USWA that thinks they can shoot and they want to go with me, Line up, boys, and you'll tap out, just like everybody else. I'm the world TV champ. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. At the ECW, and that is not dead by a long shot. You better believe that those guys are still walking and talking. And one of the matches we had some highlights from that I knew you wanted to see was one that involved Jerry the King Lawler, Brian Christopher, going against uh, Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman. Let's go to the big one. Right now. tell you this uh, was plain downright good old USWA rough and tumble style as we said dreamer that you see right there uh, and the rest of them Sandman and everybody else talked like that ECW is the only one that had any rough and tough style well check it out you'll find out Whoa. Flaked up and caught the Sandman, and off the top turnbuckle, Tommy Dreamer. This was some kind of very good action. Just typical of the kind of wild and woolly hair-raising fun stuff that you'll find out there at the big one when the USWA is out there. It's fun for the fans, not so much fun for the guys that are getting their heads busted around. A lot of rough and tumble guys going to the ring right at the moment. You see them. ECW's top crew of Dreamer and Sandman came in. They were going to take charge. Do it all. Whoa. Look at that. quite work out exactly the way that they had figured. It was quite a scrap though and I can guarantee you everybody was there got double their money's worth because it was that and this match alone. We've got some other action we'll show you later. 
There was plenty of it happening. It was just a super, super day of action out at the big one, and we'll be talking about uh, soon. All right. Talk for just a little bit, Lance. I, I saw uh, that uh, you mentioned earlier about the ECW and this idiot Paul, uh, Paul Dangerously, and I guess we still got some more idiots over here in the audience. Who's the ECW idiot here today? No one. Nobody? Okay, no, good. That's they don't fine. like them. That's fine. All right. Um, you know, this thing, Lance, is, is, is going to be, it looks like it's uh, trying to be an ongoing situation. Now, I understand I heard what you said earlier about what, what this idiot did last week out here. And, and some of the people on, on, on the USWA network didn't see exactly what took place. That's correct. But, I mean, in all the years that you've been doing a wrestling show here, have you ever seen an idiot go out of control like that? Well, the situation is that... Uh, what they're talking about is brand new and all of that. Uh, I believe we have seen a little bit before, Jerry. Well, can, can we show the people just what took place last week with the, when Paul, or, uh, well, when, Paul, well, let's face it, Paul uh, Dangerously is sending this Tommy Dreamer in here to do this kind of stuff. Look at this. Yeah. Now, we're flashing back to last week, and this was after part of the USWA network had left the show. And just keep an eye on this. Look at this. These guys have an affinity for throwing chairs and busting tables and all of that. Not that we haven't seen some of that action before, but he really loves it, this dreamer does. Well, you know, um, I made a little guest appearance, unscheduled, of course, up in Philadelphia. I traveled all the way up there, and, and uh, I may have done a little bit of damage like that, and I guess that's what he thought he was going to repay the favor. But at least I went to their arena. I didn't go to a TV station and cause this kind of havoc. And then, and then uh, I had another little run-in with Paul Dangerously last week at uh, Monday Night Raw, as you know. Yes, we did, uh, as a matter of fact, saw the first part of that. And, Jerry, I want to get to that very specific thing. I told the people earlier in the show that we were going to ask a question of you. Paul E. dangerously sat right there, and before a nationwide audience, he said, Brian Christopher is Jerry Lawler's uh, son, and that Brian has never acknowledged to the people here that Jerry Lawler is his father, and I don't blame him. That was Paul E.'s quote, and it, I'm going to ask you right now. Well, wait, answer, wait, 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 first of all, before you even ask me, Lance, that was Paul E.'s quote, right? That's right. Paul E. Dangerously got on there and no, said right. it, right? On national television, Paul E. said okay, it. Okay, how long have you known Paul E. Dangerously? A uh, pretty good while, ever since he'd been around the wrestling, I can tell you that. Right, and I have too. And how truthful do you know Paul E. Dangerously to be? I mean, in other words, so Paul E. Dangerously makes a statement, all of a sudden, that's gospel. All of a sudden, everybody in the wrestling world is talking about what Paul E. Dangerously said. Paul E. Dangerously makes the statement that I'm Brian Christopher's father, and everybody believes leaves it all of a sudden is that what you're saying is that does that make it the truth because paulie says that well he said it on national television and i think that uh, probably is why a lot of people are saying paulie wouldn't go up there and say something like that oh, although no, paulie, now that you mention it lie, right paulie no. lie. well i didn't say that now so what are you asking me lance i am asking you are you brian christopher's father that's what we are just flat out wanting to get an answer to the question right here today all right i'll tell you what i'll tell you what I wish that I had a dollar for every time I'd been asked that, Lance, because I, I wouldn't have to wrestle anymore. I've been asked that a million times. And I'll tell you what, I will, I will answer that question. Well, that's why we came. Have, what, we got a little more time? I'll tell you what, I'll come back. I'll come back. Ah, oh, now wait a oh, minute. God. I'll come back and I'll answer you, okay? Now, you promised me you're coming back. Okay, there's the king. Well, <laughs> that was the answer we got, Stacey. Uh, I'll come back yeah. is what he has to say. I In think... This show, you think you'll come back today? Uh, well, I didn't think of it that way. I certainly am expecting him back a out here answer. today. We're going to be back in just a moment. Uh, before well, we get to that... Wait a minute, but while we're talking about child support, we might as well do a little talking. What, what, what were you going to ask me? You were going to ask me something? Well, I, I received a letter this week, Jerry, and it's from the ECW. Uh, obviously written in crayon. Well, it's complaining about the way that Tommy Dreamer was treated. You might was stand over treated. here a minute. I think you're just right over here. Well, you're, you're fine right there. There you go. Well, it's they're, all over me. they're complaining the way that Tommy Dreamer was treated by the USWA and by the officials when he came here to the USWA. And they're, they're I, I'll be honest with you. I wish I could tell you what we, I wish I could well, read the read letter. It. Well, there are words in there oh, that... Yeah, 
you can read it, but there are words in there that aren't going to be said on television, I can assure you. And uh, the English is a little uh, that's not, broken. Uh, yeah, that's, the well, uh, you're right. There's words that can't be said on television. Hey, you know what? I don't care, Michael, if the ECW is upset with me. I don't care if, if Tommy Dreamer or the Sandman or Paulie Dangerously or all of those idiots from ECW are upset with me. I want them upset with me. Do you understand that? Okay. I want to invite them right here to the USWA any chance they want to come here because I got something for you. Do you know what I'm talking about? So anytime, any place, come on down. As a matter of fact, I made a little personal visit to the ECW arena and I, I, you know, I took care of a little business. So. I'm giving you the same opportunity, boys. Come on down. Don't write letters. Do it in person, okay? Well, there's, now, one, there's one other question, and it's a burning question on everybody's mind, and, and you know the question I'm about to ask. And should I go ahead and say it one more time? No, you don't even have to say it. Everybody knows what you're about to ask. Everybody knows what the burning question is. What, first of all, you know, I've been thinking about this all week long, and it's like, what is the big deal? I mean, you know... I was, I was up in the WWF last week, and, and, and here's the city of Vince McMahon and Jim Ross. They're all talking about it. Everybody on the Internet's talking about it. Everybody in the sheets is talking about it. Everybody out in TV land's talking about it. You know what? You know when wrestling used to be really good? When there was just a little bit of mystique in it. You know, when there was a little something left to the imagination. Nowadays, everybody wants to know everything about everybody, all about their personal life and all about every little thing about everything. Hey, you know what? I, had, I went to see Jurassic Park last week, and I sat there and I enjoyed that movie. You know why I enjoyed it? Because Steven Spielberg didn't come popping up the screen every 30 seconds saying, hey, these aren't real dinosaurs. Okay, you see what I mean? You know what? There's some things that are just a little better left to the imagination. I'm a big Cleveland Indians fan. You know that. Been all my life, right? I used to like, I used to like Albert Bell. Then all of a sudden, Albert Bell comes along and Chicago White Sox offering $55 million. He takes off the Cleveland uniform, puts on a White Sox uniform. All of a sudden, you know, it makes me realize, hey, these guys don't really care what team they're playing for. So it made me a little bit less of a baseball fan because that's personal business. Hold you know on what I mean? now, what? hold on now. It's, it's a simple question. Well, I'm giving a simple answer. I'm telling these people why it's none of their business. You know what I mean? It's none of anybody's business what my personal oh, no, no, life is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Michael, what's your telephone number? Well, I, yeah, it's my no, business. come on, what's your home telephone number? Come on, let's tell everybody, what's your telephone number? Well, uh, it's something that you I... You don't want to give it out, do no, you? not on television. Because it's your own personal business, Absolutely, right? Absolutely. How much income tax did you pay last year, Michael? Well, that's, that's my personal business. Right. Either. There are some things that are people's personal business, and you don't want to necessarily tell that, because I don't want to share my whole life with everybody out there. I think they're better off knowing me inside the ring and knowing that I can kick somebody's butt when I step into the ring, and they don't need to know all my personal business. Do you understand that? Can you people understand that? Wow. Well, so the, hey. the question is... But the question was asked. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to know. A lot of people has asked me, and they just want to know. It's a simple, it's a simple yes or no question. And well, they I wanted just... you to answer it. Well, I ain't answering it. I ain't telling. Okay. Well, if, hey, if you're not gonna answer it, I guess I can answer it, right? No, you can't answer. It. Well, why can't why can I not answer? It? Because I said you're not answering. It. Because you said so. That's right. Yeah. That's my business, okay? You understand that? Well, I guess that's the answer. I understand. Well, that's the answer. I guess I can't answer it. He said so, I can't answer it. Oh, okay, you want to answer it? Yeah, I would like to answer well, it. Well, go ahead and try it. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. oh, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, hey, 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 wait a minute. He said I can answer it. I'll tell you what, let me answer it. Everyone Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Jerry Lawler and Brian Christopher, a little altercation here. Could this be? The King telling Brian Christopher to get in the ring. He's got a, got a match right here, and the question is... Uh-oh, wait a minute. PG, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. PG-13. Oh, yeah, won't you just give us one of these microphones? You know, we have got a lot to talk about, man. 
You know you got people crying the blues. J.C. Ice and Wolfie D for 90 long days have been sitting at home, and we've been thinking about where we're going to eat, our next meal's going to come from, who's going to pay us, but the USWA didn't care. They didn't, didn't care. care. No, you bunch of stinking rednecks didn't care what happened didn't to care. us. Didn't care. Didn't care a That's why we found a new home and a new love in ECW Extreme, and you think USWA's got a chance. You only had a chance when we was on your side. You know what? What against. makes me sick is what we did for this place. For all these years, you people used to love us. We were the greatest thing ever around here. And now look at it. You can't get a butt in the seat because we're not here anymore. Well, we're back and we're better than ever. This ain't the nation. This is PG. Back like we used to be, baby. We're here to cause damage to like who else. ECW style, man. You think Tommy Dreamer and Sandman's coming? We're bringing all our ECW friends and USWA is going down at the hands of PG-13 and Extreme Championship Red. Hi, Michael St. John. Wolfie D. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Interrupting the program. PG-13, obviously back with a vengeance here in the USWA. Begun the ABL Dutchman Tail 97 Tour has begun. And I'm not going to be like the previous owner of the belt. I'm going to put it up against each and everybody except one man of course the previous owner as you can see the abl tour is in effect right now and i don't care if it's tommy dreamer i don't care if it's brian christopher i don't care if it's doug gilbert i don't care if it's hulk hogan i don't care if it's brett Hart. don't make me no never mind but let me tell you one thing and dreamer let me tell you something you're talking about extreme championship wrestling well you know why don't you bring your big buddy Sandman with you? Have him take the king has just come out. his head with a beer can and cut himself up. That's not extreme to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, I think this is my interview, and I think he should be escorted out. Security should take him off right now. Obviously, he's not aware of the ABL tour. Anybody but Lawler. Did you know that? That's the name of hey, yeah, I know. I've heard you say anybody but Lawler until I'm sick of it. You can mention names like Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair or anybody you want to, but yeah, just shove it over here, Dutch. Let me just tell you the only reason I'm out here. Because you see, I know, I know I'm not getting a shot until I go through Rod Price. I've already seen that in black and white. But what the problem is, Dutch, the problem is, yeah, why don't you step out of the way, idiot? You know what, you are useless out here. Totally stinking useless. Now let me tell you something. The only thing you're doing, Dutch, and it's very obvious to me, and it's very obvious to everybody else. You're putting this belt on the line against Tommy Dreamer, and what's going to happen is Tommy Dreamer, and I know this from experience, is going to kick your hairy butt all over the building. Yeah, he will kick, yes, he will. He will kick your butt all over the building, and then you will lose that belt, and then I'm going to have to go back to that extremely crappy wrestling and get my belt back from Tommy Dreamer. Let me say something right now. Do you think Tommy Dreamer can beat me? You know, you think he can beat me. Tommy Dreamer thinks... I know he can beat you. Okay, I guess I'm the only one who thinks I can win. Well, you didn't think I could beat you, Lawler, and you I didn't did. Beat me, well, I, I got it, don't you I? Didn't beat me. You doomsday. Get up here, Barons. All of these people He's trying to threaten me. You. Security, come on out here. I'm going to tell you, if you've got such a problem, I'd give Tommy Dreamer a shot. You wouldn't even do it. You oh got God, Tommy Dreamer. Dreamer has come out. Oh, God. Dutch has been thrown into the ring, and the king is on Dreamer. It's a three-way brawl all of a sudden here at USWA Wrestling. Tommy Dreamer has arrived here today on Championship Wrestling. And coming out after Dutch Mantel and Jerry Lawler, and now we're getting some help Thank out goodness, here. the locker room is clearing. Tony. I knew this was going to happen, Tony. I was afraid this was going to happen. Dreamer is in on Lawler. They're, with, they're holding Dutch back. This is all the way out of hand. We need more people out here. The locker room has emptied. Once again, Tommy Dreamer has made his presence known here in the USWA. Over there, engaged in a big brawl with Tommy Dreamer is Dutch Mantel. Jerry Lawler trying to get over there and get a piece of him. Pandemonium has broken loose, and the locker room has cleared out. Yeah, Tommy Dreamer came out with Beulah McGillicuddy, his partner from ECW. Okay, good. She's got him out of the ring. Hopefully, just get out of here. Oh, here comes Dutch again. They're taking it to the crowd. This is going to be a dangerous. Everybody, get out of the way. Tommy 
Dreamer and Dutch Mantello are in the crowd. We need to get some extra reinforcements in here. This should not be happening. Move back over here, please. All right, this is going into the crowd. This is getting ridiculous here. We need more security immediately. Come on, we need more security. Tommy Dreamer wreaking havoc here in the USWA, coming in like a bat out of hell. We're trying to get them out of here. Lawler. Dutch, Taking get out of here. Dutch. Oh my, God. Dutch has picked up shoe, baby. He's got Dreamer around the throat. Dutch Mantel has Shoe Baby around the throat of Tommy Dreamer and is dragging him around the floor here at the USWA Auditorium. This is ridiculous. All right, we need to get this stopped. This is getting totally out of hand. Oh, oh my God! James Beard has just taken a real Tommy big shot Dreamer to the just forehead. Nailed James Beard. All right, that's it. Somebody get. Beulah, get, get him out of here. I'm getting out of the way. Oh, now Tommy Dreamer high-fiving the fans after going in the middle. Oh, Dutch, Dutch Mantel is back out. Back out here. Nails Tommy Dreamer with that shoe baby, the whip of Dutch Mantel. And once again, they are tangled up in a big brawl. Several guys out now trying to break him up. Thank goodness they got James Beard out of here. Uh, this is just not, uh, totally out of hand. Uh, I tell you, there's Tommy gonna... Dreamer is a madman with his partner in crime, Boot Beulah. You know it's going to come to a head between these three people at some point, Tony. Oh, my God. I swear. Well, it looks like the things are calming down a bit, although the icon is still out here. Dutch Mantel looks incensed. He wants his hands on Tommy Dreamer. Look, well, we're about ready to get into Oh, my goodness. Dutch Mantel just... Pearl Harbor, Tommy Dreamer, right off the bat. This match has started wild already. Well, you know, Dutch snuck up behind him when he had his back turned. Tommy Dreamer was getting his lady out of the ring, and Dirty Dutch took the opportunity. Now we're off. Oh, it's the chair. There's the first chair of the night. And I uh, used it right on the top of Dutch Mantel's head. Hitting him with his fist. Now he's going to get his chair in. And he does, across the back of Tommy Dreamer. He's got Dreamer rocking up there. He's in trouble. Mantel shooting Tommy Dreamer into the ropes. Oh, leg oh, drop all oh, right oh. onto the chair. My goodness. What the world is he doing? Tommy Dreamer taking Dutch, picking him out of him, and throwing him onto the barricade. And going back to Dutch Mantel. And he's going, oh, it pounds him right what on the did I tell you? He rang his bell. Ring. And here he comes. What's he doing? He's, oh, my goodness, a drop kick right into the face of Dutch Mantel with a chair. I mean, I, I think Bill that, Dundee's interference. Uh, oh, there goes see, Dundee. That, what he gets, there he you know, goes. it was snoozing earlier. Mantel shoots Dreamer into the ropes on DDT. Looks like he's got it. That could be it. He's got it, it now. It could be going back to Where's ECW. the referee? Where's the referee? Who, that, who, who is this? That's, that's Dreamer's valet. She can't count that. Here comes, oh my, Jerry Lawler's in the ring, and he pounds. Dream, oh, Mantel. he looks completely Lawler is helping, oh, he's helping Dutch. He counts one, two, three. Oh. This kid.